Spatial ecology is trying to understand the relationship between patterns and composition in the landscape and an ecological phenomena. And in our case, the ecological phenomenon that we're interested in is native bee pollination on blueberry fields. Um, and the landscape that we're working in is Maine. And what we're trying to understand is whether or not the types of land cover that are around blueberry fields and the shapes of those land cover elements affect the native pollinators that you would find in a blueberry field. So depending on where you are in, on the globe, you're going to see different patterns and shapes and composition. In Maine, uh, for the most part, in the blueberry growing part of the state, uh, there's a lot of forest cover. Um, there's both coniferous and deciduous forest. There are roads. There are power lines. There's um, other agricultural land pastures, and then there's development. And all of those elements potentially can affect what species you end up finding in a blueberry field. Hey, Brianne, how are you? What, are, what hey, are you Frank? up to? I'm out here mapping some GPS coordinates of this blueberry field. And then we can uh, take the GPS coordinates from this data, and we can put it right into our computers, and then we can use that field boundary data for computer models. This is for understanding better the spatial ecology of the native bees. Yep, we're going to take the field boundaries here and then we can look at, from the spatial data we have, we can look at this blueberry field and we can look at the landscape that's around this blueberry field and we can start to get some ideas of what kind of native bees we'll find in this specific blueberry field. Okay, well I'll let you get back to work then. Great, thanks so much. Sure. Great. Hello, I'm Shannon Chapin. I'm a graduate student I'm working on a project looking at the spatial ecology of native bees in Maine's blueberry fields. And I'm working to um, use a predictive model that will help us understand how landscape pattern and arrangement um, impact native bees. It is a predictive model that um, uses different land cover um, characteristics to predict native bee abundance. And so taking since we know that native bees rely on the landscape for two key components, they rely on it to provide nesting habitat and also for food or forage, um, we can put those into the model and then um, it will predict what we could expect to see in the field um, as far as abundances of bees go. So we know native bees rely on two components of the landscape. The first is um, the land cover type, which provides the different floral resource values. Um, the other is they need a nesting habitat. So we can look at soils. Some of our native bees, a lot of our native bees, are soil nesters or ground nesters. So we can look at a map. We can take a map of different soil types, which is shown here. Um, and then we can recode them based on the characteristics of the soil. For example, the type of drainage. So um, native bees need a well-drained soil, um, soil type. So we can recode the map to just have the different um, drainage classes. And you can look at a map and see where a bee would be more likely to nest. On this map, we, um, you can see we have the blueberries in blue, and um, that's showing the location of the blueberry fields. And this is a recoded map of the different soil types. So in this map, the red indicates um, poorly drained soils, and the yellow indicates well-drained soils. For instance, down here, you can see that this is mainly surrounded by well-drained soils, whereas this field over here um, has a lot of poorly drained soils around it. And you would expect, based on um, the soil characteristics, that you might find more bees nesting in an area that are well-drained, so around this first field, as opposed to the second that's surrounded by more soils with poorly, that are poorly drained. So bees are limited um, by what they can access in the landscape based on how far they can forage. And we know that in Maine we've done measurements and some of our solitary, um, or some of our native bees can only forage um, maximum up to 100 meters. And while some of the larger bees can actually access um, forage within a couple miles from a field. So looking at a map of how the landscape looks based on the floral resources available to a short distance forager, which is shown here, you would see a lot of small patches because they, um, some of the short distance foragers can only get to a certain patch. So these little local patches matter more. Whereas for 
A long distance forager, like say a bumblebee, they might be able to access patches that are located farther away. So um, you can see some of those smaller patches don't matter as much. So another component of our research is the pollinator plantings. And we can use our model output to think about where to place the pollinator plantings. So you could look around a blueberry field and knowing that some short distance foragers can't access a lot of the resources, you could look around a blueberry field and um, provide that habitat. So plant beside it to provide um, floral resources for the short distance for foragers. Hello, my name is Brianne Luz and I'm also a graduate student working on the spatial ecology aspect of native pollinators. So Shannon's work is looking at the pattern and the arrangement of the landscape that surrounds blueberry fields. I'm also interested in the pattern and arrangement of the landscape surrounding blueberry fields, but I'm also interested in the shape of the landscape patches that surround blueberry fields. In particular, I'm interested in linear features. And one linear feature that I'm looking at is these large-scale power lines. In Down East Maine, there's not a lot of development. The surrounding landscape around these blueberry fields is primarily forest. We know that bees don't like forests. They don't move through forests very well because the nesting suitability and the floral resources available aren't optimal for bee, bee persistence. Um, and these, these large-scale power lines that are cut through this forest provide a potential source of alternative forage for the bees. So one of the ways that bees could utilize these large-scale power lines is as pathways of movement through the landscape. As I said, bees don't move very well through the forest. And in this picture here, you can see this large blueberry field. And it's surrounded by forest, with the exception of this large-scale power line that moves um, through the blueberry field and cuts a path right through the forest. Bees potentially could use this section of power line here to connect from this patch of blueberries over to this patch of blueberries instead of having to go down and around which some short distance foragers might not be able to manage. So this is an area with a couple of blueberry fields in down east Maine. Uh, this star here represents one of my potential field sites for surveying the bee communities out there. If we look at the location of these blueberry fields um, in relation to where the power line is, um, we can start to see how the bees might utilize the power lines as a source of alternative forage. We can see that the blueberry fields here are surrounded by primarily forest, and this power line provides um, a nice clean swath of all kinds of blooming plants that serve as uh, floral resources for um, alternative forage for these bees. Shannon's work actually indicates that they might, they, these small dis, the short distance foragers could actually utilize these power lines because they have the warmer colors along the length of the power line which represents um, areas of better alternative forage for the bees.